What's up guys? So I'm going to try and go over this single cylinder turbocharging stuff real quick. Um, I'll make a quick video of it and then if you guys have more like in-depth questions just comment below. I'll try and put a list of all the parts I've used for this little Pitster Pro 190 motor and just in the description. And yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> Alright, so let's go over the intake setup, charge pipe, and all that first, and then we'll do the fuel system. So, the turbo setup here, I've set it where it is so it doesn't hit when I turn this, of course, and then it's up high so I can gravity feed the oil down. Um, I do have the air filter off just for this video. Um, so, your charge tube... And this is common sense, the ID of this charge tube, you want to be at least the ID of the outlet of the compressor housing there. So, it's pretty simple. Um, I've already unscrewed this stuff, so we can take it off the carburetor. And this is a blow-through system, if you're not familiar with them. But, and then, this is a plenum. It's just a big chamber, so when you mash the throttle, your motor has an initial gulp of air. Otherwise, you're trying to get air through this little tiny inlet that's smaller than an inch, I think. And, um, it robs it of power, and that it, it, it's not as rideable. We'll put it that way. You can do it without a plenum, but it, it's not. You're gonna have that top end and idle, kind of like a draw-through system where you bolt the carburetor right to the turbo and just run a pipe into the motor. It idles good and it works good at full throttle, but cruising, it just does not work great. But uh, this also helps even out the pulses of a single cylinder. Um, the pulses of a single cylinder real quick, that is why turbo sizing is so hard. In fact, this I'm switching this out for a GT1238. Not the 1241, the 1238. I think that's going to be about right, but that's a whole nother topic if you guys want to learn that. Um, blow off valve, you've got it tied into the charge pipe sis system somewhere, the plenum, wherever. But um, this nipple on top here, you want to reference that to boost after the carburetor or throttle bodies if it's fuel injected. So somewhere between the carburetor and the motor. So when you shut that butterfly valve or slide or whatever, this is a, a cylinder slide, it shuts it off and the pressure can release here. So I have my nipple tied in right there. And that also is tapped and goes to my boost gauge so I can see what the motor is actually seeing, not what the turbo sees back here because it will change. Okay, inside here, there's a little tube. It's a, I think, eighth inch ID diameter tube. Just aluminum, I welded in right there. Um, and then this line hooks to that, and it comes up and ties into my fuel pressure regulator. And it's a boost dependent fuel pressure regulator. It's on a one to one rise. I'll go over that in a minute. So, the carburetor, you can pull the choke um, and anything else on your carb and put some sealant on it. I use a, it's, I'd have to, I'll put it in the description below, but it's like Teflon tape, but liquid. Um, I seal it off. My, I use gaskets on these still, but I also put a little Yama Bond, a very thin layer of Yama Bond, very thin. But um, your carburetor also has your 
fuel bowl here and it has a drain right there and on the other side there is a vent so I've tied this and the vent together and then I reference them over to this line here and this just goes right from the compressor housing to the wastegate on most turbos so I've teed that in there so what that does is when boost comes in the carburetor instead of it forcing all the fuel right out this drain line or right out the vent on the carburetor on the other side it pressurizes the fuel system and it, it just it equalizes everything out if that doesn't make sense Google it. it it will but some carburetors have more than one vent this one just has one dinky one um, and also the fuel screw on the other side that you would loosen to drain the fuel bowl I take that out and I actually epoxy that in um, just to help with this some carburetors the slide up here where you can unscrew it and take the slide out you want to tap that part that you can unscrew and put a nipple in it and reference it to boost as well sometimes that spring in there is not enough to to overcompensate the boost going in the carb and the motor can run away from you by pushing the throttle up or the slide up with boost so it's more a two-stroke thing but it's that can happen on four strokes too I'm sure but on this I didn't just because the amount of air going through here these are tiny turbos so I wasn't worried about it so the other thing on this Chinese carb and yes this is the 28 millimeter crappy Chinese carburetor that came with the Zongshan Pitster, Pitster Pro 190 there's a vent right there where that screw is and that's another vent to the fuel bowl I tapped that and put this screw in there because fuel is pushing out and uh, filling the plenum up with a little bit of fuel and it just wasn't running right I put that screw in and it took care of it, it ran great I've also installed a power jet um, come, so it sticks out right there that just takes over at full throttle um, helps feed the feed the extra air coming through there uh, this carburetor was very easy to tune actually I only switched pilot jet and main jets out once um, I couldn't tell you if I went up or down on them but you don't have to change them very much they do come rich so I think the pilot jet I went down on and the main jet I may have gone up one and then doing that this power jet I only have to unscrew like half a turn and it's it's good on air to fuel ratios okay that's the charging system let's go over the fuel system you're ugly you're disgusting I'm gonna kill you give me two hundred dollars